Steven Spielberg says he bought your movie Super 8. He bought into it just based on the title. Is that true? That's pretty much true. I, I called right. him and, and asked him if he would want to You called be. him? Well, I'd gotten to know him over the years. You leave out a very important point. When you were 15 years old, he began editing Steven Spielberg's Super 8 films for, for his archive. How did you get that ah. job? I was making all these horrible Super 8 movies, and there was a guy on a public access TV show right. who had a, a show that basically was about Super 8 movies. And I was watching that show, and I thought, I make Super 8 movies. So I called the number. I said to the guy, hi, you know, my name's JJ, and I make these movies, so I sent him these movies, and he, I was on his show. So this other guy, Matt Reeves, is watching. He sees me, and he calls. And so the guy introduces me to Matt, and Matt and I have, like, the same... Interests. Interests, and he ended up creating Felicity with me, Matt. Right. So there was a film festival that this guy who was doing this public access TV show had uh, in L.A. at the, the New Art Theater. Right. And uh, small theater, and we, we had this, this film festival, and the L.A. Times wrote an article... Uh, about the kids in the thing, and it, the article was called The Beardless Wonders. <laughs> right. And so how do you end up at Steven Spielberg's there's house? There's a picture of us on, in, uh, in the article, and uh, I guess Steven saw the article, and he had his assistant call us. Right. And she asks if we'd be available <laughs> and interested in repairing movies that Steven had made when he was our age. And of course, we're like, what the hell? What? Like, it, wow. it was insane. Instead of uh, hiring a pro, he figured to get a kid cheap. They would trust you with his, ar his precious archives. Yes, but there aren't copies to be made when you're making right. 8mm. So the, the truth is, these were the. He was entrusting 15 year old strangers. It, that's crazy to me. It, it makes no sense whatsoever. To this day, I'm like, the, something. Fucked up. There's like, there's How much did you get paid for that job? You must three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. What a film, or three hundred dollars for the whole summer? Or? No, three hundred dollars to repair both of the movies. It was two movies. Yeah. And what were the movies? What were they like? Firelight uh, and Escape to Nowhere. Did he come and visit you and no, give you I, directives? I, I, I he never ne oversaw any of it. Ne never met him. How do you become friendly with Steven Spielberg and collaborate on this? I had my first meeting with him in 1989. Someone set up a meeting for, uh, about a Roger Rabbit sequel. So when he gives you the call. You gotta be. You gotta be beside yourself. Losing my mind, and then. Uh, do you, do, what do you? What do you do? Do you shit your pants literally? Well, not literally, but. Uh, and I remember calling Matt, driving, f f losing my shit, just like driving, just freaking out about having met with Steven. and uh, and I, I remember like looking up, and I I I didn't know where the hell I was. I, Were you I'd nervous driven, in the I, meeting? I grew up in L.A. I didn't know where. I'd driven to some place. I was like, I have no idea where. <laughs> so you go in there, yeah. and he doesn't give you the job. But somewhere along the line, for like a movie like Super 8, he taps you. He wants to produce Obviously your he's film. he's watching you. What happened with Super 8 is I just thought there, there's a movie called Super 8 that I would go see that has to do with these kids making these movies. I had no idea what the story was, what the genre was. And I knew, because I had edited his movies as a kid, that he had made as a kid, I knew he had done that. And I just the, I called him immediately, which I think even contractually was not legal. Right. Because I had to deal with Paramount, not with Steven. So I called Steve. I, I, I didn't even think. Right. And I just called him and said, would you want to produce a movie with me called Super 8? And he said, yes. He yes. Just, he got it. He just goes, Super 8, yes. Yeah. That was That's how it works. But showing it to him was terrifying. My heart was fucking, it was pound. I was just, I, I couldn't believe I was sitting there having to show him this movie. And I knew that it was, you know, a, a first cut, too long, all these things. And he sat down and watched the movie. And... What was amazing was, like, during the movie, there are things he can see. He right. knows the process so well. He can look and he can see how it's going to work. It may not be the, the perfect version, right. but he sees it, and he's, during the movie, he would keep hitting me. Like, that is going to be, that's a scene that's, that's going to work, you know? He knows. Like that, he sees the best version mm. of what something's going to be.